Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to the um, uh, hands-on user track session called Enable Complex Workflow for Analysis. Let me introduce uh, our, ourselves. Uh, my name is Martin Glasowski and I'm working as a senior researcher in IT3 Innovations, which is a national supercomputing center of the Czech Republic. And uh, my colleague Jan Martinovic is the head of uh, Advanced Data Analysis and Simulations Laboratory, essentially my boss, and together we will, <laughs> we will present you um, the Lexis platform, which is a platform we built for complex workflow orchestration and distributed data management. And uh, we will show you first some slides, some concepts behind it. And as you probably noticed, uh, all of you should have received an email that your account has been created in the, in the Lexis uh, platform. So we will also show you some like hands-on live, live demo of, uh, of some use cases. So. Uh, let me start with the, with the introduction of uh, how we are actually connected to the, to the UDAT, what kind of services we are using. Um, in, the, in the platform, uh, we have a, one of the components is uh, distributed data management or distributed data infrastructure. And uh, for that, uh, we are using the B2Safe uh, services basically uh, provided by UDAT. And it works in a way that uh, uh, in the platform we are able to move and store data between multiple locations. And to do that, we are using the federation mechanism of uh, IROTS zones. You can see an example of, uh, on this slide that uh, there is uh, uh, one zone, for example, in LRZ in Germany and another zone in IT4 in the Czech Republic. And each center has a completely different storage system there. And we are using uh, leveraging one of the uh, good, uh, great features of IROTS uh, uh, to basically provide a unified abstraction of different storage resources in each center. And then we have all we have both the IROTS connected to the B2Safe and B2Handle system and so on. Uh, so we are able to generate the PIDs for a certain data set stored in the, in the zones. And also we are able to track the replicas if uh, someone decides to use that mechanism. Um, but as you can see, uh, we uh, are not using just plain IROTs. Uh, we, in the, in, during the Lexis project, and uh, Jan will tell you more about how the project came to be and so on, uh, we, are, we basically built uh, a custom set of uh, REST APIs to be able to uh, talk to the IROTs zones using uh, Python clients and, and other machines and so on. And uh, we are leveraging standard Python frameworks like Django and Flask, and we are using Celery, uh, Celery workers to orchestrate the, the asynchronous uh, data movement uh, within, the, within the platform. And those APIs are used by our orchestrator um, in order to move the data at the target location where the data are then uh, used for some computation or handled. People can download the data and so on. Um, so, uh, so this, this will be the B2Safe, and you will also see a uh, connection to the B2Access service, uh, but this will be later uh, during the hands-on session. But you can still, if you, ju just a heads up, if you, um, if you registered uh, to the summer school with the same address you have linked with the B2Access, uh, you can l already log into the portal. If not, I will help you then later. And then I will uh, pass the floor to, to Jan. And he will tell you more about the project related things. How it works. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Now I will tell you a few words about the Lexis platform. What is it about and uh, what was motivation and a few examples. We started uh, with building the Lexis platform 2019 in the projects financed by uh, European Union. And uh, in the Lexis, we have four key components. The first is the complex computing workflow orchestrator across HPC and uh, cloud resources. So our target is to provide for the user possibility to orchestrate the 
computation across different heterogeneous resources on the with high level orchestrator. Then in each side in uh, HPC user can use another type of programming model for orchestrating low level workflows. For this, if you would like to use different location, uh, the key component is uh, data management. Because user would like to compute something on one location, something on cloud, HPC, and then it is needed to move data to the second location and then continue with uh, computation. For this, we are created distributed data management systems, currently based IROS and connected with uh, several EUDAT services, as I mentioned Martin. And the third important point is to provide for the user, uh, user's uh, web portal for easy access to easy execution of the workflows. Because uh, our motivation here in our project, and you can see it in the last point, was to provide HPC at cloud resources by easy way, not only for academia, but also for industry at SME, and to help SMEs uh, with using the resources. Yeah, important, important part of, of whole our system is also uh, the thing that from the beginning we, we thought about the system that uh, by secure way and uh, with support of uh, zero trust uh, security. So the tokens and other things are very important key components for us. How the Lexis platform looks like, you can see it on this scheme and I will try to describe the components. The key part is the Lexis Platform Core. Lexis Platform Core is uh, split into two core components. One is uh, the distributed data management uh, infra infrastructure, which has inside the uh, index managed by Elasticsearch, data, data access and data management things, which are also connecting with sites. And then we have on the right side uh, workflow management and orchestrator. Currently we are using for orchestration of the workflows two tools. One uh, which was used during the project was Istia orchestrator provided by Atos. And newly from beginning of this year we are using for high level smart orchestration also Airflow. Then this core system is, can be connected with different sites. For us it's very important that uh, we are creating something like co-federation or federation of the HPC center, but with the way that each site has uh, the autonomous things, uh, each site can have uh, their own AI system, and then we are mapping the user identities to the Lexis core to our own AI system, which can be uh, connected with external services as B2 access, my access ID. And for the resources management, we are also using external things. Currently, we are cooperate, for example, with, uh, with Puhuri team for developing the things uh, for managing the projects. On each side, to, to have new sites included in the Lexis, what we have to do on the site is to install two key components of the Lexis platform. One is HPC as a service solution developed uh, at IT4i. It is open source software which is helping the users to execute remotely through the REST API, the computations on the HPC clusters. And the second important part is, uh, part is uh, distributed data infrastructure area, which represents the component when the users are, st uh, are storing the data. And then from this distributed data infrastructure area, we are staging data to cloud or to HPC resource. Uh, currently, we are using for distributed uh, infrastructure the IROTS. So if, user, if any center would like to be connected with, uh, with Lexis, they need HIP. If they would like to also have the data on their location, they need uh, IROTS. What we are providing for the users are several uh, interfaces. User can connect and use the platform through the web interface with predefined workflows. We are providing uh, public REST API for, uh, so if you would like to create your own application above the Lexis platform, you can do it. And we have already uh, several cases which are using the, only the REST API. We are providing for uh, manipulation with data and uh, for integration the Lexis to your code, the Pi for Lexis library. Currently, this library is, uh, uh, has a support for data management and we are working on the support for workflow or orchestration and execution. And 
you can uh, write your code with our REST, REST API and execute uh, whatever you want, what is supported by this REST API. And important is that uh, if a user uh, would like to have a terminal-based access, he can do it because it's very easy with uh, Py for Lexis library or uh, provided REST APIs. And now I would like to show you a simple example how the platform can be used by special case with uh, industry. In the Legate project uh, financed by uh, EuroHPC JU, we, we are developing in this project the plot or we are extending the platform by the use case from Dompe Pharmaceutics and they have special, special requirements. Dompe has their own code develop, co-developed uh, by Polymi and Chineka. Uh, Dompe, the, the, code, the, the code name is uh, Ligen and uh, Dompe has their own IP and they, would they don't want to share this, uh, this software publicly, but they would like to allow the users and also academia to use this software for uh, drug discovery, computations and so on. But, and by this way, we decided that they can do it through the Lexis by the way as platform as a service. So the user who is accessing Lexis platform can upload the data to the Lexis platform. He can execute the computation, uh, which uh, includes the workflows with Ligen software. But uh, the user is without any possibility to touch uh, the code or binaries because he has access only to the portal and everything what is on the backend is uh, on the HPC centers and the access to this code is provided only for Dompe and uh, for the customers of the Dompe for which Dompe allow to, to touch the code, for example, Polymi or Chineka for development of the Ligand software. Kind of code is it? This is code for some bio bioinformatics code, uh, which uh, compute, uh, which takes some poses of uh, create around the molecule, create some poses. Uh, but I don't know these bioinformatics details. Yeah. But the domain is a dr drug discovery domain. In the Legate project, then we are using also another another uh, code which is open source. It is Gromax, and we are creating special pipelines which combine Gromax and Ligand together. Yeah, what is important uh, on the story, what I would like to show you is that we can uh, count with different stakeholders who are using the Lexis platform and HPC infrastructures. For example, in case of uh, use case with Dompe, Dompe can have the in over management. Management needs to have the needs to sign the contracts about the providing with the HPC centers about computational core house, for example. Then Dompe has the uh, users, so bioinformatics specialist. This, uh, this specialist uh, not need to have uh, direct knowledge and uh, about the HPC and they don't need to have direct access uh, to the HPC systems. Then another stakeholder in this scheme can be, for example, Politecnica de Milano as the university which is helping Dompe with uh, code improvement and optimization. Then on the HPC side, we have HPC expert, which are helping with, uh, with uh, day on the daily basis as uh, support for uh, companies uh, to help with code deployment if anything crash on the HPC side. So HPC experts, or in case of your HPC hosting uh, entity application support team, is uh, part of this user story and. The last but not least are the Lexis support team, which can uh, in general help uh, the uh, HPC experts, Dompe and Polymy with, uh, with uh, Lexis platform. And then I would like to map the stakeholders, and you can shoot the show here, the mapping of the stakeholder to the Lexis platform. Dompe management on the top, they have access to the Lexis portal, portal and Lexis users, which uh, want to execute the computation. And in our uh, hands-on, it will be you will represent these users who will have access to the to, to the Lexis platform. So don't pay users. Then Lexis support team. I have typo, typo here. I have to fix it in the next version. Lexis support team. This team can help uh, all stakeholders with uh, managing or in any issue with uh, Lexis platform core. Then we have the specialist from Dompe who can create or update the high-level workflow 
and also can help them by pharmaceutics with code optimization on the HPC side. And on the HPC side, we have uh, HPC support teams represented here as with HPC experts. Then what can happen and how the users can use the Lexis platform on the right si left side or from your right side, you can see the screenshot from the portal. The first step in the story is data upload. User uh, can log into the platform, can use our wizard for uploading the data and upload the data to the Lexis platform. It means that user is using or portal which is used now by the user, is using uh, Lexis APIs for data transfer. And thanks to this, he can stage the transfer, the data, and upload the data to pre-selected location in the wizard. And data are stored on the pre-selected aerozone. When we have data on a site, we can uh, create the workflow. For example, here you can see the simple workflow, which is, uh, which, has, which is executing the computations on two locations. So user can, can dis describe by the wizard what he wants to compute, what will be parameters of the computation. Then uh, say to the, in the wizard, create the workflow and the uh, web portal is starting communicating with the uh, with, uh, orchestrator of the Lexis platform. And the orchestrator, based on the setup of the workflow, is uh, going through the workflow and uh, providing the step by step, by step the, the execution. First step in this workflow, because we have two locations, can be data transfer. So it means that uh, if we want to execute uh, the, this workflow on the two locations, we have to transfer data with, from the one location where the uh, data was uploaded by the user to the second location where we want also to execute the workflow. Then is very important part Martin mentioned is as a staging, because in uh, this row, data are stored in object store, in the, in the IROTS. But for the computation, users on the HPC cluster are using parallel file system, and this parallel file system is connected with uh, computational node on the HPC. So first step is to stage this data from object stores to the parallel file system. After the data are on the right place, orchestrator is saying to, to code. So in, in our case here in this execution, it was self-organization math. In case of Legion, Legion is starting the computation. At the end, the data are created by the code and stored on the parallel file system. So we have to stage them back to the, to the object store. And then user can download the result of the computation. Again, if we are talking about small amount of data, he can download it di directly through the web portal. Or what we are supporting now is also the possibilities that the user can deploy on the infrastructure their own uh, Docker with, for example, visualization components. And we are executing it in the Kubernetes. And through the web portal, user can manipulate in Kubernetes uh, directly with, uh, with the result and not to transfer it out. Because one important motivation for us was also that if you have a code, which generate gigabytes or terabytes data, and we would like to visualize it. You would like to do any post-processing. It is, doesn't make sense to download it back and to use it on your, your site. It is much more better if you start to use it and, for example, create another workflow for post-processing, or if you have a possibility to visualize the result and manipulate with, with result directly in the portal. So for this, we are using, we can use, for example, Kubernetes. Yeah, Lexis platform, the Lexis project ended at the end of 22. So we are now one and a half year after the end of the projects and uh, we moved to the saying that we are working now with Lexis platform. And this Lexis platform is uh, extended by the requirements and developed in also in the several Horizon Europe and EuroHPC projects. Uh, you can see here several, several of them. And the one important for us for the next step, if we are talking not about use cases, but about the platform is projects exact for mine. This project started this year in January. IT4I is coordinating this project and we are cooperating there with several 
partners, for, new, for example, also with another HPC center, which is Leibniz Supercomputing Center. And Martin will say a few words about this project. Thank you. So, uh, as Jan said, uh, this uh, project uh, is again is another European project where we collaborate with uh, mm, multiple uh, multiple European uh, uh, HPC centers and universities, and uh, also we have uh, four application cases and. Uh, Main focus of this project is to build a, uh, let's say, uh, platform which is capable of handling extreme amounts of data and it is able to uh, store the data, index the data and move the data around between different locations, so which is especially important if we are talking in the context of complex workflow orchestration and if there is a stakeholder or application case which deals with terabytes of data, structured data for example, uh, and his working data set is in terabytes. Uh, we uh, need to have some tool which is able to move the data around efficiently, query it, track the movement, and so on. So this is the main, of the main focus of the, of the platform. Uh, we can also see there's an extension of this distributed data interface uh, we just described uh, in, the, in the Lexis platform and would like to use the results of this project as extensions uh, to the Lexis platform. So it means that at the moment in the Lexis uh, itself we support, uh, let's say, staging of individual, individual files or uh, folders with some complex structure. And uh, thanks to the uh, thanks to the Exa for Mind, where, we, where one of the objectives is to build something called Extreme Data Database, we would like to have uh, options like uh, uh, stage uh, staging results of some complex queries to some uh, database clusters. It doesn't have to be just a SQL; it can be some uh, document databases or even time scale or time based uh, uh, databases and so on. And we'd like to use that approach to basically create a working data set, stage it to cloud, HPC do the, do the computation, and the same way uh, store the results back if, if possible. And also we are talking there about supporting uh, new, uh, new kinds of storage. In, in terms of application cases, we have four of them. Uh, the first one is a scientific one. It's again, it's molecular dynamics. I think it's, it can be also described as protein folding, if I'm not mistaken in the in informal way and uh, uh, this is in uh, collaboration with uh, one of our own labs uh, and uh, our colleagues from Olomouc from University of Palackého and uh, they are dealing with uh, let's say one petabyte range of data and uh, their problem will be most likely uh, described as a hypercube, um, hyper, hypercube index and uh, they are planning to make queries uh, which, will, uh, which, which should be able to obtain like a subset or so like cut off of this uh, hypercube and stage it somewhere to some, some data store. Then we have another application from industry provided uh, by the Valeo company. And uh, they, are, they have, uh, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the biggest uh, amount of data in the project. They are planning to work with hundreds of petabytes of, of data. And uh, uh, this use case is focused on um, uh, basically, again, creating working data sets for training and inference of the AI models for autonomous driving. And uh, the data are uh, coming from uh, many different sources. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, image data, it's uh, spatial data, it's again time, sp time scale data. It has to be tracked very well. The data are sensitive, so it has to be uh, it has to be very secure, isolated from the other use cases, it has to be encrypted and so on. So this is also very interesting uh, use case, I think. And then we have uh, two use cases coming from the SME domain, uh, small medium enterprises. Uh, first one is agriculture, uh, smart farming viticulture. Uh, it is focused on analysis uh, and uh, using uh, AI models uh, to predict the uh, uh, let's say outcomes of uh, of a crops. If someone has a vineyard or some some big agriculture in the in agriculture 
uh, company, you can use the product that they have uh, to predict uh, their possible crops or uh, eff efficiency of their, I don't know, processes and so on. And this uh, uh, use case uh, is using the data from the Copernicus missions and all the different European sources uh, of satellite imaging and build this platform for, uh, for uh, yeah, ag agriculture, uh, some smart agriculture basically. And they are dealing with around like one, one petabyte of data. And a uh, similar case is with the other SME, it's the health. And uh, this uh, SME is a French company and uh, the data are a bit smaller than the other application cases, but they are highly sensitive and uh, health data. So we are talking about uh, the same aspects, like moving the data to closer to the computation, staging the results back, back but in a very secure way, a trackable way, and so on. So uh, this would be the application cases for the project. And then, yeah, then there is this slide which uh, uh, is uh, trying to describe uh, where the Lexus platform is, what we have now, and where, what will be the contribution of the Exafon Mine project to the, to the Lexus platform. So basically, as, as Jan said, as we said together, the Lexus platform provides you all those things on the, on the left here, workflow orchestration, resource management, and so on. And you are able to use different resources like uh, public, uh, private, on-premises, uh, cloud compute, HPC clusters, some remote storages, uh, let's say public archives of data, public uh, S3, for example. And uh, thanks to the exa mine we should be able to add the support for complicated indexes. So those are the hypercubes and cutoffs of those hy hypercubes. Uh, this would be especially important for, uh, for the one of the cases where they want to store, let's say, different configurations of the molecular dynamic situations and basically store mm, like a different uh, experiments as one of the dimensions of the cube. And they will be selecting an actual candidate, uh, let's say compounds and drugs, which can be then tested in a real labo laboratory. And for that, we will need to use all those different kinds of data, sto data uh, sources like SQL databases, or even no SQL database, I have to extend this slide, and uh, time series databases and so on, and S3 objects and uh, yeah, whatever will be needed uh, out there. If you want to know more, visit our website over there. And this will be, I think, end of the slides. Thank you very much. And questions before we will begin with the hands-on to the slides? Everything clear, hopefully? <laughs> no questions? All right. So let's... Hmm? Sure. Uh, a little bit of topic. Uh, you said that uh, you're using uh, Elastic Search and yes. in the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It's for login? Uh, sorry, it's a for login? It's for login? Uh, no, so this is uh, the Elasticsearch is used for uh, uh, data set uh, and metadata indexing. Oh. But I mean, yeah, Elasticsearch, I think uh, the colleagues are using it for logging as well, but it's not, it's like a part of the infrastructure, it's not part of the platform. But in the, in the, uh, in the platform, we are using it to store the, uh, the documents which are represents the data sets, and we can make like very quick queries based on that, full text search and so on. So the yeah, it's, uh, it's from optimization perspective because when you deploy the several IROs on different locations, yeah. it will take a lot of time to query yeah. across this, uh, this several yes. locations. Yes. It, we, it, it is why we take the metadata, put it to the one location in Elasticsearch, and by this we can, in the yeah. Yeah. core of the system, very fastly find the data set. Yeah. Thank you. And also, before Kenton's mm -hmm. experience, I sure. can log in. You can log in. No. Can, cannot. Uh, I don't receive uh, any uh, like email. Ah, all right. So, yeah, I, I'll check with you. I will, uh, I will show everyone how it uh, looks uh, first, and, uh, and I, will, I will help you individually with the, with the access. Because there have been some problems, but hopefully it will work. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, let me begin with the, uh, with the demonstration of the... Mm, of the Lexis portal, which is the front end we built in uh, front of the APIs of the, the individual platform uh, services. Uh, if you visit the uh, URL portal.lexis.tech, you will get this page. There is also information on the, on the board there. 
Uh, I would like to also remind you that we have a uh, documentation on the URL docs.lexis.tech. It's a, a rather extensive, uh, extensive page with all kinds of like detailed information how the platform is wired and how it works. So I encourage you to visit that. Uh, so if you arrive on the portal, uh, first you have to click on the on the login button over there. And then as you, can, as you can see, you have three options to, uh, to, to log in, either a local account or a B2 access identity provider or my access ID by Puhuri. So I'm going to use the B2 access because here we are on the, on the UDAT. I clicked on the B2 access. Have to, I'm using here um, our university uh, login. You can see here that it uh, offers me this, uh, this logo. I'm clicking on allow to pass the data. And I should be, uh, I should get this, uh, this view, uh, this view of the portal, which has a, which has a menu on the, on the left, foldable. Uh, the most important po uh, part of this, uh, of this portal is uh, the way how it is uh, organized. So if you log into the, to the platform, uh, you are a member of an um, organization. And the organization is a completely abstract uh, entity, completely abstract thing in the uh, in the Lexis platform. It's just a row in the database, and it's basically a group of uh, of users and projects. And then the the, um, uh, the organization is used to group uh, something we call Lexis uh, computational projects, which you can see here on the in, in the other uh, level of the menu. And uh, for example, I will switch myself to the training projects, a project which we will use together. And uh, the project is used again as an abstraction of different compute resources. So to that training project, you uh, uh, can see that there are uh, two resources attached. In this case, uh, there are two allocations of uh, computational time on two different HPC clusters. The first one is a HPC cluster Carolina located at IT4i. We have some allocation there, which has some unique ID. And the allocation is uh, measured by core hours or node hours, depending on which center uses uh, which uh, units. And then we have uh, an allocation in LRZ, which is the German supercomputing center. And we are using one of their clusters under some ID. And uh, the, the allocation here is unmetered, then, then, and therefore we don't have any, uh, any information of, of this. Uh, we have like not available uh, value here. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, if you are working with uh, data in the platform or, uh, or a computation, you are doing it always within the context of some Lexis project here. And of course, the Lexis project uh, uh, needs some users. And uh, for that, we have this, uh, this table here. I tried to add uh, all of you who registered for the, uh, the, the hands-on sessions. Uh, so you should be able to execute uh, the workflows within this project. And you can see that we have uh, airbag uh, metrics or airbag approach to um, manage access to different functionalities, different features of the, of the platform. So, uh, if user gets associated with certain organization or with certain project, uh, uh, he will have a, um, a certain role depending on one, what, what, what the user needs to do. So this is how it's organized on a, let's say, abstract level. Uh, now I will show you how to work with the data set. So the, you have like four views here on the, on, on the left. I, I, I showed you the organization and projects view. If, uh, first step, of course, if you want to begin with some computation, you have to upload some, uh, some data. So I click here on the data sets. And this is essentially now what happened. This is the query to the Elasticsearch, which answers your question. <laughs> if you click on the data sets, this uh, table is uh, generated by a direct query to the Elasticsearch. Or oh, there is an API in front of that, but it's uh, essentially a query to it. And uh, we are... Uh, recognizing two types of data sets. So first data set is called, first type is called uploads, which means that uh, if uh, someone creates a new data set, uploads the data, uh, it will appear here. Uh, for the upload, uh, as Jan mentioned, we have a, we have a nice uh, wizard. I'm not going to go through that, but uh, 
this wizard, uh, in this wizard you can select the file to upload as you are used with some, from some other systems. And uh, what, what is also nice, what is probably worth mentioning, we'll try to select some random file here, for example the slides we just presented. Uh, we, are, uh, we are trying to enforce also a metadata structure and if you're uploading the data, uh, data set here, you have, to, uh, you have to define the title project within uh, the, or, or in which the data set will be uploaded level of access and of course zone the location where the data set will be placed at the moment in this project there are as i mentioned there are like two locations uh, defined but we'll be mainly using the it4i one so i'm uh, uh, i'm defining the, the the location it's called zone because it is it is literally an, an iroad zone to which the data set gets uh, eventually uploaded and when i click on next you can see that i get another uh, another page of this wizard which uh, allows me to defined uh, all kinds of uh, metadata which are necessary to uh, have the data set fair, open, public and all those, uh, all those things uh, within the scope of open science. And, then I've, and if I click on finalize, I can, I can upload the uh, file like this. This upload uh, is uh, going over HTTPS protocol and it uses uh, something called TUS. It's like chunked HTTP protocol. It has uh, wide support in, on the front end, in JavaScript, and also in the back end, and in .NET and Python and so on. So we decided to use that to provide, uh, let's say, the easiest way how to upload data to the platform. But if you have bigger data or different use case, you can either use the endpoint which implements the tools directly or you can use also IROTS client and for that we are providing uh, a Docker, uh, Docker container uh, which the users can launch and uh, uh, basically do the, do the login to the platform using the OpenID provider and upload the data there yeah. and download. <coughs> Yeah, we tried. I mean, I tried like tens of gigabytes and it, it was working. It depends on the, on the connection, of course. If the connection is slower, then <laughs> it will take longer. But the chunk protocol is uh, pretty, pretty resilient and uh, yeah. So yeah, this would, be the, this would be the data sets. And again, everything is asynchronous. So if, if you upload the data, the successful upload means that it has been uploaded to some temporary area and then there is a process uh, going on which takes the data to the uploads the data to the actual iroads zone and in, uh, and puts the metadata in the iroads and in the elastic search and so on and same goes for the downloads i'm not going to show it uh, how it looks now uh, so i was talking about uh, the type of data sets which we call uploads and then there is another data set which we call like workflows or workflow results and these are data sets produced by some workflow so if there is a step in the workflow which produces any data uploads the data back to the platform it will appear here and you can see that uh, compared to the previous table there are two more columns which say which workflow generated this data set and which execution of the workflow generated the data set and i will come back to that uh, later because now we are arriving to the, like, let's say, the, the core uh, functionality of the platform, which is the workflow execution. So I'm I will click here on this workflow menu. As Jan mentioned, we are now supporting two orchestrators, the ISTI orchestrator developed by uh, Atos company. And recently we also added the support for Apache Airflow and we'll be using that for our hands-on. So I'm uh, going to expand this Airflow. And in, the, in this training project, we have several uh, workflows. Uh, defined. Uh, I will show you the, uh, I think that the most interesting one we, we prepared for you, uh, which is a between uh, graph centrality computation. What the workflow does, uh, it uh, takes, uh, uh, it basically takes uh, uh, a, a graph of representation of uh, some street network in some area. You can also define your own. I will show you how and uh, it will compute, uh, let's say, importance of the edges in this, uh, in this uh, uh, road network. So at the end of the workflow, you will get an image which will show you which streets are the most important in terms of like graph interconnection. Um, it's a pretty nice uh, algorithm. 
And thanks to our experience uh, in the lab with the traffic analysis and traffic management, uh, we, I mean, it's, it was an obvious choice uh, for this, uh, for this hands-on. So if I, uh, if, uh, if you want to execute this workflow, you have to go to this airflow, uh, click here, select one of the workflows, the Bitfinex, click on details and the I here, and you will uh, get a, like a information uh, like the detailed uh, description of the workflow itself, when it was created and how many executions are going on. Uh, I will show you uh, a finished execution now and then I will also show you how to execute your own. So before we begin, I executed, uh, executed a workflow which I uh, described as the Kayani. So I, uh, I put there uh, the middle of the Kayani city with the perimeter of uh, three kilometers as input to the algorithm. And I will show you how the workflow actually looks like. So if I click on the detail of that particular execution, I can check all the inputs I have put. There are some metadata, there are some uh, like ID of the allocation, which is not important. But for us, for our hands-on, we have those three parameters, which are the most important. And I will show you um, in the execution what that means. You have, you have to essentially put there a GPS coordinate uh, and, uh, and the perimeter, uh, the, the basically the radius of the circle, which will be used to cut off, uh, uh, to create a cutoff of certain road network. And, uh, it, it should work hopefully anywhere on the planet, but I just tested it in, <laughs> on Europe. <laughs> because I, yeah. Uh, so in this workflow execution detail, you, will see, you, you see the inputs, and there are three tabs here. Uh, the top progress will show you this graph of this execution. And this is, uh, I think, the most important one. Each uh, graph here, each uh, box here represents one task in the workflow. It's uh, in, in the workflow, in the airflow terminology, it's an execution of an operator. And uh, in this workflow, uh, we execute, we, we are using the operators to call different uh, APIs to facilitate the, uh, the AI, the uh, token handling, the data movement, and the computational execution, of course. And thanks to that, we are able to execute, well, we are able to move the data between locations, execute uh, images or containers on Kubernetes clusters, submit jobs to the different HPC clusters, as we described uh, before, and stage the data back as necessary. So, uh, just to show you an uh, example of the how the execution looks like, uh, I will now. Yeah, Wait, I sure. Will, I, will, I will a little bit command this this duck. Of course. Based on a lot. I of wanted to show you when I run it, you know. But okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What what is very important here? Martin can uh, mm -hmm. will describe later mm -hmm. later each task, but. Uh, According to what I have presented, I mentioned that we are doing uh, orchestration across some federation and heterogeneous resources. And you can see here that we have one, one task which is about the cloud. What we are doing in this showcase is about the cloud, it is Python script which is downloading data from OpenStreetMap. Normally on the Carolina cluster, for example, one node has uh, 128 cores. Yep. And it is wasting of the resources to execute some, something with what is downloading data only to what only one, one, one thread and, and yep. uh, according to the rule, for example, in our GHP center, you can allocate for whole node. You cannot allocate only one core. It is uh, also the reason why it doesn't make sense to do it on the HPC. It is why the downloading data, data collection is executed into cloud. Then the data are stored to the distributed data infrastructure, and then this Bitfinex, its application, which in our case is has is NPI application, which you can use the whole 128 cores on yep. the on the HPC node. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and, say, and same goes also for the post processing of the data because the post processing generates an, an image, uh, a map, but for that again you don't need like 128 cores. Very powerful. Uh, node, you just uh, need a couple of cores for a couple of seconds, and for that we have another cloud job which launches a different ki kind of uh, container in the Kubernetes cluster, and then stages the data uh, back to the DDI, to the yeah, to the distributed data infrastructure. And you can see that thanks to the uh, thanks to the uh, airflow, we are able to make branches and multiple levels of the workflow. Because, for example, when the HPC Bitfinex job is finished, it's done, uh, we are 
now the workflow continues in two branches. The one branch is uh, taking care of uh, finalizing the job, cleaning up the working directory so we are not uh, clogging up the, the scratch parallel file system, which is very expensive on the HPC clusters. Uh, and uh, basically deleting the, the, the session we are using to call our uh, HPC middleware. And then the second branch takes care of uh, launching the, the visualization image on the, uh, on the Kubernetes cluster and transferring the result of the visualization back to the data. And that is a common like stopping. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I will be fast. <laughs> I will be faster. Uh, now I will show you how the result of this computation looks like. So now I just run the workflow and uh, uh, I know that I've uh, named my workflow Kayani1. So we can see it here. I just use this search uh, column or search field here. And if I click on details, I will get a detail of the, of the data set, of the metadata where it's located and so on. And I click here on the list files should give me a list of files within the data set. You can see that the, the between us produces uh, several things. It produces this image and the folder, which has the input data, you know, this downloaded graph based on your definition, STD error and STD out of the particular HPC job. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So for example, STD out. Yeah, it, thanks to the front-end uh, front integration, we were able to integrate basically this Visual Studio code there. So uh, if uh, uh, the file is reasonably small, so we are not allowing to open like 10 gigabyte plain text file there, it doesn't make sense. But if the file is reasonably small, we allow it uh, uh, to be opened like that in a, in a GUI, in a web interface. So you can, you can see that uh, the, this HPC job produced this STD output and it took like, I don't know, four, four seconds to, to run this uh, simulation on 128 uh, threads. If I go, if I go back, uh, I will show you how the result of the between us uh, looks like. Yeah, it, uh, now it's pulling the image, it takes some time before it's, uh, it appears. There is a certain there is a latency in this, uh, in, on this, on this Wi-Fi. And now you can see that this is a road network of, uh, of Kayani and uh, there is this uh, abstract scale of importance of, uh, of each individual street because it's each street here is represented as an edge in a, in a graph. And so the green one are the less important and the more red you get, uh, the, the more important uh, are from the, let's say, graph topology perspective. Uh, yeah. And my zoom screwed, uh, screwed up. So this is, uh, this is how it looks like when it's executed. And now I will show you how to execute your own simulation. And uh, for that, I will go back to the workflows, go to our flow, select the between us graph centrality uh, workflow, click on, uh, click on I, create a workflow execution. And I will, uh, in order to do that, I have to select some GPS coordinate of uh, some city. So I will, what I, what I can do, I will, for example, select, uh, hmm. we can, let's say, try, uh, we can try Helsinki, in the middle of Helsinki. I will click randomly, for example, here. I'm using just Google Maps to obtain the GPS coordinates. If you want to obtain a, a coordinate of some, some point on the map, uh, just doing a right click here. And if I click here on this, uh, on this uh, number, it will, the web page will copy it to, to, the, uh, to the clipboard. Then I'm, I'll go back to the, uh, to the Lexis, where I clicked on the Create New Workflow Execution button. And then I have to put that the execution name, so I will put that name Helsinki one. Yeah, be, uh, just be careful. Don't put any spaces in the, in the execution name because uh, we, yeah, we found that there is a problem with the validation of the, of the title. So don't use any spaces. Otherwise the, there, be, there will be a problem. So I'm putting it, uh, I'm putting the name uh, in this form. Then if I expand this option accordion, you can see that there is a multiple fields including this input latitude and longitude. And I have, the, I have the number from the previous step still in the, in the clipboard. So I can simply copy paste it here. So I need two numbers, latitude and longitude. So like that, 
to probably reduce the amount of it's probably not necessary to have it that precise I guess yeah so I put there the input lo uh, latitude and longitude which uh, corresponds to middle of Helsinki I clicked somewhere clicked somewhere there yeah and uh, then uh, I have to put the perimeter which means that uh, there uh, will be uh, the the, the the pre-processing script will basically create a circle with this coordinates in the middle and the circle will be will have a perimeter uh, defined by this number and this will be the cutoff used for the for the computation of the between and centrality so i will i think i will keep the two kilometers yeah, there this demo may be limited to five kilometers. yeah don't don't put there like huge numbers like hundreds of kilometers because either it, it it won't allow you and uh, or you will be waiting for a long time until it's finished because we also, for this uh, training, we limited the submission of the jobs to just uh, one node because uh, uh, it will be, you, you will wait a shorter time in the queue uh, for the allocation. Because if you would put like tens of uh, nodes for each of you, you will spend a huge amount of time here. But, yeah. Um, what about the users? How can they buy the resources? Yeah. So, uh, this this platform is taking care only uh, about like usage of the of the um, uh, of the resources. Uh, if you already have an allocation, you can use it uh, through the Lexis platform. But uh, normally, if you want to use the European HPC clusters, you have to submit a proposal to either Euro HPC or uh, some national allocation committees. It depends how the resources are divided. And for that, we are also planning some integration. So maybe I can, I can maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, but the one uh, one part of the platform is the project level, and on each project level you can assign the HPC project. So in the Lexis you can have projects, and then uh, you can ask uh, any center which uh, is providing the resources for computational resources. And if this center is uh, has a connection to the Lexis, they give you the approval of the computational projects. And then to the Lexis project, you can assign this, this ID and by this connect uh, the resources together. Yeah. So I'm going to run it. So I put there my inputs and I'm not touching anything else. So I click on here on create. Now I get this detail, uh, the, 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 the detail of the execution. And if I click here on the progress, now uh, you can see that the graph is uh, still uh, is, is slowly changing colors. So green, dark green means that it has been successfully executed. Uh, the uh, light green uh, means that it's now being executed. So now the workflow is uh, pulling the, the maps based on my inputs on the cloud. Uh, and then uh, it will continue with the submission of the jobs and so on. Uh, I, I'll, I'll start with the go around. Yeah. yeah, maybe you can. I will. I will keep. I will keep that open. And now you can try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll probably leave the. Yeah, about HPC resources. In the meantime, if you can talk. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> if uh, if uh, you will need any resources uh, for your research uh, purposes, and if you'd like to know more how to obtain it. Don't worry to contact me during the coffee break and I can explain it what are the possibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 
Now we can help. So for yeah, so okay, let's I will get back to the email uh, later. Let's try it this. Uh, uh, one uh, one thing which I would like to show you. After the creation of the workflow, we will go back to the list of executed workflow and it can be happen sometimes that uh, you will not uh, see your execution there. Not what it was a refresh, uh, refresh in the page. Yeah, because this depends on the browser. Yes. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is, this is uh, something what uh, it's not so easy, but uh, it's possible. But currently, this workflow is created by the Python code with annotations for the workflow. And what uh, we will provide uh, uh, for, for Istia, we have possibility to define the YAML file with definition of the workflow for this new airflow. We, were, we are now doing the same thing, so you can define the workflow by the YAML file and the YAML file upload inside, but only for predefined components. Yeah, because, uh, because this is smart orchestrator across the multiple locations and so on, you cannot provide the full functionality that you can create some tasks and some computation inside. Because it has to be these computations have to be cloud or HPC part. Yeah. So we will have a predefined components for staging, execution, and so on. Uh, and then you can create the workflow with this predefined component. If you would like to test it, test it, it is also possible that you will execute your own airflow. And uh, use, uh, and in this day airflow, you can use the APIs to do access. We have it in the documentation. Okay, so I can take some of my own uh, functions. And yes. Yeah, but uh, computation has to be the task on cloud or on the HPC.